everyone. In this upcoming unit, you'll definitely have need of your programming skills. And I know you're thinking, what programming skills? So we're going to do another video that will just kind of refresh you of some of the things that we did last time, and we'll get the joy of implementing Newton's root finding method. So just quick review of Newton's root finding method. This was the idea. You start with some initial guess. You construct a tangent line to the curve at that x value. Then you find where that tangent line crosses the x-axis. And that's your second guess, which is, in most cases, actually closer to the real root. Then you repeat the process where you construct a tangent line there, find where that tangent line crosses the x-axis, and that gives you another guess. So that's the process that we're going to implement. If you remember, in class, we actually derived a rule that will let you calculate what this next guess is using the previous guess. And here's what that rule looked like. If x sub n is our first guess, x sub n plus 1 is our next guess, and you find it using this equation. You take your guess and you subtract the function evaluated at your guess divided by the function's derivative evaluated at your guess. And that quantity equals the next guess. So if you just do that in a loop, that will get you iteratively closer approximations for your root. All right, let's go back to Python. So you can get there by typing repl.it. And I will start coding now. And we're going to choose Python 3. OK, I'm just going to do a quick review of how to do some basic things in Python. You can feel free to skip ahead if you remember this stuff. So real quick, the way you display things to the screen is you use the print statement. Anything in quotes will get treated as text, so that displays the word hi. You can create variables like this. So I'll say x equals 10. And then if I print x in quotation marks, that's the letter x. But if I print x outside of quotation marks, that's the variable x. So it prints the number 10. There is this kind of nicer way. Well, let's define functions first. So you can define a function by saying def f of x colon, and then return whatever you want your function to be. So 2 star star 3, uh, no, sorry, 2 star star x would be 2 to the power of x plus 3 times x. Remember that even though you're going to want to say 3x like this, um, the computer doesn't know that that's supposed to be times. You actually have to use the times operator. All right, so uh, I want to do, I want to use this function, 9 minus x times x minus 10. This is what we're going to find roots of. So back here, let's say 9 minus x times x minus 10. That will be our function. And let's just make sure that we can display things. So I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to use my function f, and I'm going to evaluate it at an x value of 10, because it's using that variable. So when I run it, I get 9. And if I want to change this to like 101, I would evaluate it at 101, and I get that value, a very large negative value. All right, so far so good. So uh, two more quick reminders, and then we'll start programming for real. Uh, the way you can do a loop is by saying for val in range, and you give it a range of values. And if I want to just print out what is val, you'll see what this does. This runs uh, in a loop, and val takes on every single number starting at 1 and going up to 10, but not including 10. So it goes from 1 to 9. If I made this 15, it would go from 1 to 14. And there we see that it does. All right, so I just wanted to show you one more idea. Um, I said before that an equals sign means take what's on the right-hand side of the equals and save it inside what's on the left. So even though in math these two statements are the same, they both say that x and 9 are the same, uh, when you're programming, this statement is not valid because you can't save anything inside the number 9. So it's always take what's on the right, save it inside what's on the left. That lets you do something that doesn't make any sense in math. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take x, and I'm going to say x equals x plus 10, for example. OK, well, in math, there is no number that is equal to itself plus 10. But remember, we're taking the current value of x, we're adding 10, and we're saving that back inside of x. So it's like every time we pass this line of code, we're adding 10 into the existing value of x. So I just want to show you what this does. So let's print out what x is. And so x starts out at 9, 
we add 10 to it, so the first thing we should see is 19, and then you'll see what happens as we continue to loop. So we've got 19, 29, 39, 49, 59. So we're looping a whole bunch of times, and every time we loop, we're adding 10 to x. That kind of idea is one that we're going to reuse. OK, so let's implement our actual root finding method. I'm going to have my initial guess, which I'm going to call x underscore 0. Uh, that looks a little weird. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it x, I'm going to call it guess. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so my initial guess, I'm going to make it be 10. And now I want to use that equation that we talked about, this one, to calculate what is the next guess. So it's going to be guess minus f of guessed over f prime of guessed. So, so my next guess is going to be guess minus f of guess divided by, hmm, well now I have a problem because I need the derivative function. Python doesn't give you a way to automatically find derivatives. Um, so instead, I'm going to define a new function called f prime. That, and I, I know what the derivative is. You do too, because we know how to do this stuff. So we're just going to figure out what is this derivative and enter it ourselves. So if I take the derivative of this, let's see, 9, the derivative of that is 0. If I distribute this, that's going to be negative x squared, whose derivative is negative 2 times x. And then if I distribute again, I'll get 10x. So the derivative of 10x is just 10. So f prime is now the derivative of f. And so now I can use it up here. I'll say f prime of guess. So let's just double check that it makes sense. Guess minus f of guess over f prime of guess. So guess minus f of guess over f prime of guess. OK, that makes sense. And that's the next guess. So this is the thing that I want to be doing in a loop. So let's make a loop for val in range 1 to 10. And you got to press tab here. Uh, if you don't press tab, Python doesn't know that this is the statement that you want to be repeating 10 times inside your loop. All right, um, I want to display my answer. So I'm going to print what is next guess. But then the next time I go through the loop, I need this guess to be equal to my next guess. Sort of put differently, once I've computed next guess, it's going to become my current guess for the next iteration. So I need to give a new value to guess. And what am I going to save inside of guess? It is next guess. So you can think about this like, let's imagine guess is 10. So here I've got 10. Let's say that I compute this, and the next thing is 9.5. So it saves 9.5 into there. Then I take that value right here, 9.5 and I save it in there, so now guess is 9.5. And the next time through, that's the value I'm using. So I'll make 9.5 my guess, and it will calculate a new thing, and that'll be the next one. Let's run it and see what happens. So you see I very quickly uh, narrow in on 10.8309, and in Desmos, it looks like that is indeed the root. Let's find the other root. Let's give it an initial guess of maybe negative 10 and see how quickly it, it finds it. So if my initial guess is negative 10, and I run it. So again, you, you see it doesn't take very many iterations before it's uh, approximated the root with quite a high degree of precision. OK, well, uh, I hope this was fun. And you're, like I said, we're going to use these skills a lot more in the next chapter, so I'm looking forward to it.